Alrighty, kids. Uh, we've already gone over the information on pages 234 related to equivalent uh, ratios. If you need to review the video, go right ahead. This video is going to talk about and give you some example problems that you can do to practice the skills that you've learned in this lesson. Okay? Um, and so we're going to take everything that we've talked about and if you don't remember how to do this or it's not clear to you, go back and watch the video again and follow along, okay? But these are some practice problems to see if you've mastered the skills, okay? So these are practice problems from the book on how to create equivalent ratios. So um, ideally your book is out right now and you have some paper and pencil ready to go. All right, now uh, one of the things that you want to do is you want to find problem six which is labeled a communicate problem. In other words, you see if you could answer number six and then see if you can use the ratios in another way from above. And the ratio they're talking about is this ratio, the example from the book, 16 to 48. So answer number seven using that ratio, the basketball players to uh, baseball players. And then number eight, do the ratio 16 to 48 and 12 to 32 form a proportion. So why don't you pause the video, uh, see if you can answer those questions right now, and then I'll review the answers with you. Okay, well, how do you do? Let's see. How can you write a ratio in simplest form? So basically what they're asking, what do you do to create a simplified ratio or equivalent ratio that is in simplest form? best thing to do is to divide each term by the greatest common factor. Again, an example of that would be is if you have a ratio of 12 to 16 and you want to put it into simplest form, you would simply take the greatest common factor. In this case, it would be 4 and you would divide both terms by 4 and you would get a ratio of three to four, okay? And so that's what they mean when they say, how can you write a ratio in simplest form, all right? Number seven, when you look at number seven, use the ratios in another way above. Okay, well, another way would simply be to form a proportion, okay? The question was to form a proportion. The answer block covered it, okay? Now, what you'd wanna do is you'd wanna take your 16 to 48 and in this case, what they did was they simplified it down. In other words, they divided by the greatest common factor of 16, and they got 1. They divided 48 by 16, and they got 3. And so they created a proportion by dividing by the greatest common factor. They, you could have multiplied, or you could have divided by 2, but this is a sample amp answer. All right? Okay, number eight, do the ratios 16 to 48 and 12 to 32 to form a proportion? Well, in this case, our answer is no, they do not. The ratios are not equivalent. In other words, what we had to do was take our 16 to 48, okay, and if we divide those by the greatest common factor of 16, we know that we will get 1 two, three. Okay, so then we take our 12 to 32 and we divide those by the greatest common factor. And so in this case, our greatest common factor that we're looking at is going to be four. So we divide by four and we get three and we divide by four and we get four times eight is 32. So in this case, our simplest form is a 3 to 8 ratio. In this case, our simplest form is a 1 to 3. So the ratios are not equivalent. Okay, they are not equivalent. All right, now let's take a look at some other pack, uh, practice problems. Let's take a look at 9, 10, and 11. Okay, in 9 through 16, write these ratios that are equivalent to the given rate to the to the given ratio okay write three ratios that are equivalent to the given ratio 
So they want you to write three equivalent ratios for each of these. Pause the video and see if you can do that. All right, let's see how you did. I'm going to give you some sample answers, again, because you could be simplifying or you could be multiplying. Okay, some examples in this case, um, they would have, and you might actually have some of these. Okay, they took the purport, they took the terms and they multiplied 2 times 6 to get 12 and 7 times 2 to get 14. And then what they did to get to 18, they multiplied by 3. 3 times 6 is 18, 3 times 7 is 21, and then they multiplied by 4, and they did 6 times 4 to get 24, and 7 times 4 to get 28. So that's how they created equivalent ratios, all right, or proportional amounts, okay? And in this case, this was already in lowest terms, so they had no choice, or you had no choice, but to multiply them up into equivalent amounts. Okay? Now, when we look at this one, a 4 to 5 ratio, again, we notice that 4 to 5 is in simplest terms. In other words, you can't divide to create equivalent ratios. So some of the examples that you may have come up with that the book uses is, in, case, they, in this case, they went and they used a common factor of 2. 4 times 2 equals 8. 5 times 2 equals 10. And then they just simply up the factor to 3. 3 times 4 is 12. 5 times 3 is 15. And then they upped it by 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 5 times 4 is 20. So they created equivalent ratios through multiplication of a common factor. Now, for this ratio, once again, we see that we have 13 to 15, but they threw it at us using the colon form. So the best thing that I would recommend in this case is to simply set up your problem as a fraction. So it looks like a fraction. And in this case, again, it was multiplying by 2, multiplying by 3, multiplying by 4 to get your proportional amounts or your equivalent ratios. Okay? All right. Let's take a look at some leveled practice. All right? In 17 through 19, write equal if the ratios are proportional. If they are not proportional, write not equal. So why don't you pause the video and see if you can figure out if each of these ratio sets creates proportions. All right? Okay, here we go. Let's see how we did. Let's start with number 17. In number 17, you can see that a 1 to 3 ratio is not proportional to a 3 to 1 ratio. And if you, if you think about it, you know, if you, you set it up and think about it as a fraction, certainly you can't say that those two amounts are going to be, there's no way you're going to go from 1 to 3 and 3 to 1 using either multiplication or division on either one of those. It's just not going to work, okay? So those are definitely not proportional, okay? So the next one is 6 to 7 ratio. Is it proportional to a 36 to 42? Now, at this point, you're probably thinking to yourself, you know what, 36 is a multiple of 6, 42 is a multiple of 7. Pretty good chance. However, we should do some math to see if we can actually make it work and prove that it works, okay? So what we want to do is we want to take 36 to 42 and ask ourselves, how can we go from 6 to 36? Well, in this case, 36 is a multiple, so we would multiply 6 times 6 and it would get 36. Well, now we want to know, can we go from 7 to 42 by multiplying the term by the same factor 7 times 6 equals 42. So in this case, we do have a proportional amount. All right? The next one is a 5 to 8 ratio compared to a 15 to 32 ratio. And are they proportional? Well, again, what I like to tell kids is to, 
you know, set up your ratios in a fractional form, okay? Set them up in a fractional form to see how they would compare, all right? So in this case, what, I, what you might want to do is you might want to just see if this simplifies down to that or if you can create equivalent comparisons, all right? Now, our answer in this case is not equal. Well, and, and here's why. Certainly 32 is a multiple of 8 and 15 is a multiple of 15. But if you want to go to 5 to 15, you would multiply by 3. If you multiply 8 by 3, you don't get 32, you get 24. Okay, so even though this is a multiple of 38 or of 8, it is certainly not going to create a proportional ratio. Okay, so that's just, you know, that's just kind of a different way of looking at it and deciding whether or not two amounts are proportional. Again, you can easily take them and simplify them down to see what you would come up with. All right, so anyways... Um, if you uh, are still confused, you can see me for further help. Review the Pearson video, review the video prior to this one, and there are plenty of other resources you can use as well. All right? Hopefully you understand.